internet friends, welcome back to Tama Fights. Usually, this is a series where I discuss individual game mechanics, but I'm kind of co-opting it to talk about some of my early thoughts about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet instead. I usually do these big in-depth analysis type videos when I talk about individual games. Not that long ago, I just released an hour and a half long essay about Pokemon Coliseum, but I really don't like to do those kinds of videos about games that just came out because I like to have more context, and I like to give my ideas time to incubate and mature. Also, I haven't even done 100% of the stuff in the game yet, so just a disclaimer, what I'd end up talking about in these videos might change down the line. And actually, it'll be pretty interesting to revisit these videos in like, eight years when I finally get around to making an actual essay about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So for now, take what I say in these next few videos with a grain of salt. It's not going to be as researched or as thought out as one of those big review videos. It's more of a first impression. So to start with, it feels a little icky to full-on use my platform to praise the games. These games are pretty obviously the product of an unfair and unsustainable cycle of crunch that's probably hurting the workers who build these games and is unfair to consumers who are spending twice the amount the Pokemon games used to cost on games that don't meet the level of quality that we would expect to come with a higher price tag. Negative Press is one of the few tools that we have to put pressure on Nintendo, Game Freak, the Pokemon company, whoever it is that is making these decisions, that keeps this big Pokemon franchise machine in motion. And this is kind of our only way to tell them that we think that this is not cool. So I don't even know if it's right to use my voice to put praise at these games out there into the world. At the same time, if I'm being honest, Scarlet and Violet are honestly one of the most enjoyable experiences that I've had with a modern Pokemon game. So I'm torn. I want to geek out about the mechanics of this game that I've enjoyed and continue to play, but I also don't want to move the conversation away from accountability. But realistically, I don't know if I can keep making videos about these games and keep talking about these games without that naturally starting to happen. So I guess just try to keep that in the back of your mind. I'm not trying to endorse the circumstances that these games were released under. And since it turns out that they are good games, that only makes it a bigger shame that they're tainted by their rushed production. They could have been amazing, and we will never see them live up to their full potential. Now with all of that out of the way, I'm going to ramble a bit about where I've been with the series since I stopped talking about these games as they were released, just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from when I look at these games. The Gen 6 games, X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, were really the last Pokemon games that I played extensively at launch. I did play Sun and Moon and finish them, but it was over a really long period of time, and I never got very far into Ultra Moon and didn't finish it. And then when the series moved to the Switch, the same thing kind of kept happening. I'd get Let's Go and Shield as they were released, but I'd end up dropping them pretty quick and never picking them back up again. Just recently, I actually finally almost played all of Let's Go Eevee, but then Scarlet and Violet were released, <laughs> right before I could get my last gym badge and finish the game. And Part of this is on me. I think I got pretty burnt out on Pokemon when I was making content full time in Gen 6, and I needed a little bit of a break from the yearly Pokemon grind. You know how in Kihi's delivery service she stops being able to fly when she starts doing it professionally? It was like that, and I needed to go visit my artist friend in the woods for a while to get my love of flying back. Except my artist friend was Pokemon Crystal, and I stayed for three years. But also, it was partially that the series was mechanically moving away from what I enjoy about it. You have heard me say this a million times by now if you've seen my other videos, but my favorite thing about Pokemon games is that you have a billion different options for building parties, and that you can get a lot out of each game on repeated playthroughs by building a ton of different teams. You can make character building decisions and decide who your trainer is through which Pokemon they choose to raise, and it's a lot of fun. Just for example, in that Let's Go Eevee playthrough I was in the middle of, I did a run where I played as a junior trainer. I could only use Pokemon that past junior trainer females slash picnickers have used in other Pokemon games, and it was really fun to come up with a story for this trainer as I went. Like I decided she's in the Eevee Scouts, which is why she carries an Eevee around with her. She has a history with the Pewter City Science Museum because her troop took frequent field trips there, and whenever she met another junior trainer, she knew them from some past Eevee Scout event. 
and it was really fun to make up my own headcanon for her. Each of her different Pokemon catches was for a different merit badge, and she was obsessed with getting all of the merit badges. And I was determined to beat the Elite Four with unevolved Pokemon in my party like a real NPC would. So I ended up grinding a ton of candies and levels to help me do that. And maybe this is completely insane and no one but me plays Pokemon games this way. But this is kind of how I've always played Pokemon. You can get a lot of mileage out of the games this way because it's easy to keep coming up with new characters and new party combos to try out. And it seemed like Pokemon games up until Gen 6 were built almost intentionally to make this kind of play both possible and interesting, and to reward it and reinforce it mechanically. You might not be able to add a new Pokemon and quickly catch them up in levels to your party from anywhere in the game, but if you pre-planned an interesting team of six, the pieces would kind of fall into place and you could create unique challenges for yourself. Different parts of the game would be easier or hard depending on who you used and where because the games were balanced pretty intentionally to have different difficulty curves at different points in the game. And these choices really made a difference in the trajectory of your journey. My favorite game to do this in was Ruby and Sapphire because depending on who my team was I might get stumped at Watson or Flannery or Winona or Liza and Tate and I would have to stop and figure out how to beat them with the Pokemon I was using. So I've replayed Ruby and Sapphire probably a billion times. The difficulty of the game isn't too hard for kids, but it is balanced in a particular way. So it would peak and valley in response to your team building decisions and it would feel like they mattered. So with the introduction of the EXP share, and some other changes about the progression of the games, it got harder to do this kind of thing. Each game after Gen 6 has handled this differently in their own unique ways, but generally the overarching thing that they have in common is one, the game balance being a bit more leveled out, and two, leveling up Pokemon is no longer the result exclusively of just using that Pokemon. For example, the experience share now being on automatically, and the experience you earn being applied to every member of your team in every fight, means that it's really easy to level up Pokemon and new team members without ever using them once, and no additional effort is required to add any new team members at any point in the game. I used Let's Go as an example of how I like to play Pokemon games, but it was actually a really bad example, because a the majority of the experience that you earn is tied to catching Pokemon, and has nothing to do with actually battling with your team at all. Which meant that in my junior trainer NPC playthrough, just by catching a ton of wild Pokemon, my unevolved team of weak Pokemon was extremely OP and overleveled without me ever having to get good at using them or learning to strategize, like compensating for their lack of stats with battle items for example. In Sword and Shield, Raid Den started rewarding experience candies, and this could be done before you even had a single badge. So you could basically pick whatever level you wanted anyone in your party to be at. And again, the end result is that the story of your trainer progressing through the game and the story of your Pokemon becoming stronger gets uncoupled. And this in combination with, in most of these new games, there being very few challenges where being higher level was not the answer to every problem, who you used in your party in any of these games at any point ended up mattering less and less to your experience of the game. It's pretty common in most of these new Pokemon games for enemy trainers to carry three or fewer Pokemon. And in some of these games, it was really difficult to stay at a level where your Pokemon weren't one-shotting everything. And as this was changing, the storytelling was also growing. And while I definitely appreciate a lot of the advances in storytelling that there have been across these games, they're definitely more reliant on cutscenes than they used to be, which makes replaying the content less fun and less rewarding. The end result of all this was that Every playthrough of each of these games ended up feeling very homogenous, and whenever I tried to make a team building decision, in the same way that I used to, where I was trying to define who my trainer was through my Pokemon choices, it never ended up feeling like it had an actual impact on my experience of the game anymore. So point being, in a lot of the 3DS and Switch Pokemon games, they handle team building, leveling, and difficulty balancing really differently than they did in past Pokemon games. And this was, I'm sure, a deliberate decision. After all, most people are not insane like I am, and they don't replay each Pokemon game a billion times. So, to most people, being able to easily add a new member to your team and level it up in a single playthrough is a positive. And to Game Freak, not needing to so carefully and meticulously balance each area of the game in difficulty probably has saved them a lot of effort and time and development that they could put into other areas of the game. So instead of encouraging repeat playthroughs, 
to use a bunch of different Pokemon, now it's encouraged to use a bunch of different Pokemon in one playthrough. So now, instead of replaying the game as different people with different teams of six Pokemon over and over, you're now encouraged to play each Pokemon game just once, but use as many different Pokemon in each playthrough as you want, because it's so easy and accessible to add new team members and catch them up. And while I definitely understand that this is a result of the game's priorities evolving, and while I don't personally actually think that these were bad decisions at all, because they make sense in terms of evolving the series and moving things forward, to me personally this just actively dismantles the thing I enjoyed most about playing Pokemon games, so I found the newer games really boring. It was just really hard for me to get invested in my party or care about the game at all if it made literally no difference who I used at what point in the game, and I rarely had had to do any work to get new party members caught up. And again, this may be a problem only to me, but the shrinking number of Pokemon available in each game with the limited national decks, and migration not really being so much of a thing anymore, limited my choices in terms of building the kinds of characters that I was interested in building. There was also a lack of post-game content, especially in Gen 6, in terms of continuing to play after the main story. So you were encouraged to catch more Pokémon in each playthrough, but you had less and less to do with them that wasn't competitive battling, which I am super not into. So I ended up dropping each of these games and not really wanting to pick them back up again, because I could just go back to older Pokémon games and replay those as many times as I wanted, which is what I've been doing. So then I tried to start to figure out how to approach these new Pokémon games differently. If I can't enjoy these the old way I used to play, maybe I can find fun in the new way of doing things instead that's more in line with the way that these games were actually designed to be fun. So I would give it my best shot and try raising lots of different Pokemon in one playthrough, but it felt aimless to me still. What they were going for just wasn't really clicking with me and I felt kind of frustrated by it. That was until the series moved to open world. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, or Arceus if you insist on being correct, and also in Scarlet and Violet, suddenly the catching and using lots of guys in a single playthrough was actually fun, because finding them in the world to begin with was the fun part. Exploring the world, seeing what guys show up where, not knowing who you'd find behind every rock and around every corner, and actually catching them all was exciting and fun in a way that it had never been before. Just by making the hunt itself a bigger part of the game, by making it less predictable and tying it more directly to how you traverse the world itself, it clicked for me finally. Now I understand why you would want to catch and use, but not necessarily get invested in a ton of different Pokémon in one playthrough. Because the Pokémon themselves are more of a reward for exploring the environment than they ever have been before. And the main gameplay isn't battling and getting your Pokémon stronger. Now it's actually catching them all. More than ever, I think this new style of gameplay really captures the thing that Pokemon was inspired by. That feeling of exploring the woods with your friends and collecting bugs. And it's not really because you want to keep a massive collection of bugs forever or because you really want to watch bugs fight each other, but because the act of looking for and finding them in itself is what's fun. And in a weird way, I now feel like I understand what Sword and Shield were trying to do better having now seen all this stuff work so well and so intuitively in these new games. The raids, the leveling system, the wild area, I've now seen each of those ideas reach their full potential. I've played games where I found them fun to engage with, and I would find it more interesting to look back at the previous entries and see the small iterative steps that they were taking to get to this point. And wanting to go back and play Sword and Shield is an impulse that I have not had since the games came out. Which brings us full circle to why I don't review games when they come out anymore. <laughs> Having the context of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet gives me a lot more insight into what the goals of those changes were in Sword and Shield, and how to engage with them in a way that's actually fun. And I probably would have regretted making a review of Sword and Shield after only playing it the way that I used to play Pokemon games and not finding that fun at all. I definitely had that issue when I made reviews of X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire right after they were released. I played through each game in like three days and then wrote a review. I feel like the opinions that I expressed in those videos didn't represent how I felt about the games even like a year later, and I don't think I ever want to repeat that. So I'm looking forward to revisiting those games in the future too. Today while I ask people to subscribe and hit that bell icon and send me more suggestions for future Tomabites, I'll do a little show and tell and show off my weird Pikachu Denpo trophy. We found this at a thrift store in Osaka. This was given out to people who sent telegrams back in like 2007, and I guess somebody didn't want theirs. So it's mine now. 